Hello, hello. Waiting to see if uh, it's going to show a view count or if anybody's showing up here on the live stream video. Maybe I should I should set some sort of I should look at the time because I'm at a nearby park. Behind me is Dinamo Stadium. That's what you're seeing back there, Dinamo. The first thing, uh, well, I wish there was more people before I would say it, but Hi, Anja, Indira. The other name is in the George, and I don't know who that is without looking closer. But when uh, it's interesting because when I was doing this at the last event, when I was making this video at a Rooms Hotel uh, on the the power is in Europe, and I thought NATO is what I heard from one person, and then I saw in the rest of you too it actually also was either supported by or had something to do with uh, Transparency International or something like this, the NGO about transparency. It's difficult about the Georgian and English language for me because if I use Google Translate, um, it's still, as, as most of you who are watching here probably already know, it's difficult to get an accurate translation. I can ask one uh, person, Georgian person what this means translated into English and it means something completely opposite than the next person and uh, everybody's understanding and level of uh, language is different so it makes it very difficult but what I want to say is that what's interesting to me is that when I'm at the cafe down the street here Degusti um, maybe there were like a pretty good balance of Georgian viewers listed here, American viewers, uh, the friend from Portugal here, student of the Meyer case, among other other pursuits and interests that he has. So uh, there was a pretty good mix of, of viewers, right? But when I'm at the event, and I told this to Tamar, um, it's like some kind of weird experiment or just a weird coincidence. I don't know. Maybe it's both, but I'm making the video like I am now, except it's facing the speakers, the, guy, the, the, the guys and gals that are speaking. And um, there's only three Americans there, that's it. And I'm, <laughs> it's just insane how they're working. The, I, it's, it's, it's really crazy because you've got the question, and it's a legitimate question. It's not being paranoid, it's not conspiracy, it's, not, it's published in the local media about how Georgia has surveillance keys that have been given by internet companies to Georgia's internal police. Then I have George uh, Utenishvili, formerly with the Georgian MOD, now he's a professor. I had met him at IBSU, International Black Sea University, on an ISAC event, and then also at his wedding, of course, I was there. So, but when they were censoring my photos with the warthog, my gun was, um, my gun, my hand was on the gun, or near the gun, and it was a front shot. It was a pretty interesting shot, so uh, that with a lot of other warthog or A-10 photos. So what was, sh what was showing on Facebook was that the administrator was censoring that photo on the Carvelli Association event back at the end of September that I didn't uh, get an invitation to by the normal uh, official government proxies, as I call them. Uh, so uh, it was being censored, and it, Facebook was saying that George is the one censoring it. I'm like, what the? What is that shit, man? Because George is the guy that's, you know, I went to his wedding. We did an ISAC event with George. I mean, he's a rocket scientist, for God's sakes. He's a defense, he's a He's a defense scientist, among other things, for sure. He's a professor, at, and now I think it's another university. So here I am, and I'm like, what the hell? This is, so he, and so we get into, I got into it on Facebook, probably insulted him and the whole planet, but so then he's like, call me. So I call him, he's like, Mike, I didn't do that. That's Facebook. And then he explained on the phone to me about how the censorship works. Uh, and how these guys, he said not only that, he said, look, Mike, these guys that are usually some Georgian guys or girls that don't even have any experience, they're out of work, maybe they haven't had a job for a long time, maybe they never worked, 
sold, they come in, they got less than six months experience, almost no training, and they're in charge of censoring Facebook in Georgia <laughs> or the internet. They've got the internal surveillance keys from the internet company. That's what he told me. So I filmed with my bloggy the laptop screen of the transparent temporary block on Facebook. And it's like they're experimenting or testing or trying or harassing or research, whatever they want to call it. They may put it under the guise of research, like they called one event here that I attended and that I filmed and a lot of people were there. They called it a, a very high level research event. So um, who knows, it might even be Bitzina's people on the NGO citizens studying how media works or technology or whatever, who knows. But um, maybe we're all Bitzina's guinea pigs in that, I don't know. But uh, anyway, we know that Facebook has done their testing and their research in this, in this, with this technology and on individuals and groups and even entire nations. So what's happening is, is also there was a black screen, you know, like a black, uh, and, and I wrote about it, and then, and then, it, then it's gone, and so I have to go back and clarify. I'm glad I have the time to sit around and check all this stuff at the moment. And I go back and write that, well, that now it's changed. Because if you write that, hey, my stuff, my video is being censored, and then they, they, the black screen is not there anymore, which thankfully at least one or two friends saw that, it'll make you look like you're, you know, like, what's going on here? The guy's seeing technical problems or whatever. But the, the topic that they're censoring is very closely related to what I'm talking about right now, and that's Leila Carvelli and the Ministry of Defense here. That's what they've been censoring. Uh, and also the patriarch situation. Those three uh, combined topics where I've tied in what happened and, and what it means and things like that, that's what's been censored. That's what's been problematic on Facebook uploads and so on. It's not the only thing. Originally it was the 150 extra cities and villages that Russia had occupied further after the August 2008 war. And Facebook used to delay those posts or I thought they would just go missing. So I would post again and again. I thought, well, something's not working. The button's not working. This Facebook is not working. The internet connection's not on. You know, something like this, right? And what it was is they, they would delay it. Maybe they would hope that I would forget it and just move on, but I didn't. But then they would just let all the, all the uh, posts would just come through at once. So maybe there'd be like five or six posts come through. So that topic back in 2000, late 2010 and 2011 was heavily censored by Facebook. I guess they just didn't want the world to know or people like me to be putting out there what my uh, close friends here in Tbilisi were upset about, which is that they had 150 more villages uh, occupied after August 2008. So I, what I'm learning is, is what they're censoring. Now what they may try to do is what we call strategic deniability, in which they'll just censor a whole lot of things uh, and then and then make it look like it's just a general thing they're doing over here, like five, six things, like they used to do with the soft color revolutions over here, according to uh, uh, one former detective, L.A. Uh, narcotics detective. Um, he got into investigating, uh, you know, drug trafficking in the United States and Mexico and all that stuff, and it led all the way up to intelligence agencies. So uh, I think it was Michael Rupert, Mike Rupert. And I think he committed suicide. But he used to fly over to Russia now and then, over or Ukraine, I can't remember which. But he was quite a detective. But he, he brought out the, uh, a book on some topics. And, and one of the things was about the soft color revolutions. I was, I was over in Kiev during the uh, Orange Revolution. And so they tried in several former Soviet republics to run these soft color revolutions. But... Uh, they didn't succeed, except maybe here in Georgia, and some people may have a different opinion on whether, it, obviously it didn't really succeed well in the Ukraine. And then they have the Maidan that just took place uh, here uh, back in the 2014 and so. so. And that was a very, very, very different uh, revolution. That was a very violent revolution. The soft killer revolutions, maybe uh, they attempted them in other former Soviet republics in the, in the, even in Eurasia, but uh, they failed. And they, they would say later, according to Mike Rupert's information, uh, that that was a strategic deniability. And I noticed the term here where the Georgian president uh, had come out with the term strategic patience. Um, 
maybe the uh, other term that had come out was strategic communication, the program they had put in and uh, right before the U.S. Ambassador here, Ian Kelly, uh, before he announced his farewell the next day, he had said they completed a, a, a helping the government here put in a, a strategic communication program. And uh, anyway, I laugh because I, I accuse these people, there's no communication. They asked for help with the project. And uh, listen, nobody can come back and say about the project that I helped with uh, that it wasn't uh, bearing some kind of fruit because it did, I mean, we can say that there's some amazing coincidences or somebody really paid attention. And I'm going to tell you that when I go to my senator's office, uh, either one, but especially Roy Blunt on the last time was April 2016, they took very careful notes and about half of everything I suggested was repeated on the House floor. Um, coincidentally or not, maybe we're just on the same page, but uh, at li more than half of those, well, at least half of those suggestions were repeated on the House floor by U.S. Congressman Steve Russell. So, um, and it was done, authentically it was done with um, the best intentions on my part, and I'm sure on their part as well. But uh, my point is, is that um, the the mention of strategic communication uh, about the project that I helped with uh, and have and I continue to help with. Uh, I wrote a letter about being inactive with it back in October, and then I wrote a letter when I was in Missouri, United States, in December for a congressman and sent a copy to Layla Cardavelli, president of International Society of Alexander Cardavelli, and I said, I want to become active again, and here's some issues that Georgia has our partner, our ally, our strategic partner, but uh, if we're going to use their terms, right, not talking about Blunt's office, but some of the politicians as of late using that word strategic. Um, I, uh, I wrote about the the fact that they spent all this money on defense, but where's the national security issue of better pensions and medical insurance in Georgia? And that that needed to be addressed. And it looks like United National Movement put out a flyer, a brochure that I saw on Facebook that not only intends to address a, a you know, by implementing a 400 lari a month pension for the elderly or whoever qualifies for it here, but also uh, I think it, it comes down to around a thousand U.S. dollars or two thousand gel for police force, for police salary, uh, which I didn't think of that, but God, that makes, I know from experience in Ukraine, you've got to stay on top of that or you'll have, you know, an unhappy, uh, 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 under, under valued, under cared for police force and you can't have that over here or anywhere because they will be tempted to uh, you know uh, be corrupt so that's that's brilliant on the part of uh, the UNM uh, that brochure that I saw and, and if they'll follow through with that if they'll actually manifest it and keep that uh, campaign uh, objective uh, if they'll make it happen if it actually happens that's the key word that's the key sentence actually then uh, it's super, but if it's another false promise, if it's another election um, bullshit ploy, well then, you know. But uh, time will tell if they have that opportunity. I don't know what will happen with that, but I do know that that was uh, my expressed concern in the mid-December letter that I just saw in a brochure from the United National Movement or UNM Movement, uh, that political party here on Facebook. So. But the, the reason that I known about it is because I heard about it from friends here, from Georgia. So if they didn't care, I wouldn't care because if they didn't tell me, I wouldn't know because it's not something that I go around investigating or checking on or asking about. Uh, it became aware to me that uh, elderly here were, were dying of, uh, of, of basically, they didn't have enough to eat and uh, didn't have the appropriate to medical care. So. Anyway, on these topics, uh, also the ships, the two ships, defensive ships that were given to Georgia. Uh, I wrote a, a letter to both Mac uh, Senator McCaskill's office and uh, U.S. Senator Roy Blunt's office after the NATO Security Conference October 2015 here in Tbilisi after talking with the advisor, personal advisor, 
to the president of Azerbaijan, he informed me about Georgia's very serious defense need. Um, and they needed a couple of uh, decommissioned uh, defensive rocket ships for Black Sea security, just two, just if they could become for sale. And that means that decommissioned. And uh, after talking about that with my family, actually, on a personal level and getting some opinions from other Americans, um, uh, I, I uh, trusted this advisor to uh, Aliyev, I believe is, is his name, the president of Azerbaijan. Uh, we had a, everything was perfect, very professional, very cool guy, very down to earth, very in, super intelligent. And I took it on my own initiative to contact our senators and make those letters public. Now, no one did me the favor of letting me know that Georgia was giving, given, they were gifted to defensive ships on the Black Sea, uh, but I found out by Professor Krovachevich of the uh, Russian News Monitor on Newsbud, who is a Russian professor that teaches at the university in California. And he's on Newsbud, Sabel Edmonds Newsbud. So that's how I found out. He was like something like the topic of Gladio B and NATO destabilization of the Black Sea or something like that. And I'm like, I'm going to check that out. What's he saying about Because the NATO topic in October 2015 was on uh, Black Sea security and the importance of naval power and the shift to the uh, importance of naval power and security and defense matters. So I... Uh, that's how I found out Georgia was given two, given two ships, and I'm like, well, I wonder if somebody paid attention to uh, my letters, you know, that were made very public after the security conference, because that was uh, October 2015, and uh, senators can, if they, if they want to respond, they generally give themselves, or it's a general kind of, kind of guideline, 45 days. Uh, so... Yeah, on the holiday, you figure, and or I think it was early 2016. I'm not, but it was 2016. Georgia was just was just given the ships. So, and that was the result of, um, um, I believe. Okay, I can't tell you that for sure, but I believe that were, was a, a result, or it was a spoke in the wheel. Um, you know, the teamwork involved. I actually had an invitation from uh, Armenian American who lives in Armenia, but he was uh, raised in the United States. And he has a, a lot of work that he's doing with security issues, and especially in the region. And But that's how I got in the conference. And so here I am talking with, over lunch at Subway, one of the forum speakers and presenters, um, President Aliyev's uh, personal advisor on the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict. So it's really cool because and also I was there with the Armenian um, Genetically, by race, Armenian girl I've dated for years, and but also, but she's fully Georgian raised, so to speak. She's been in Georgia all her life. In fact, I think maybe she went to Armenia first time a year or two ago. It was after that conference. So it's very interesting how that worked. And then, of course, Leila Karpeli was there. I didn't know she was going to be there. There was also um, Tiona was with her, and I asked uh, to to what I felt to be two key important questions to the conference. So, so the project has, has, in my opinion, on a number of levels and in different ways, has, has made some good results in a practical way for helping facilitate some huge, huge um, steps forward for Georgia's defense. And uh, that's all I can, I can uh, say about that at the moment. Um, so, but when I talk about censorship, um, we don't know, is it Georgia's stuff? Is it Facebook's stuff? Is it, is it some other uh, rogue nation's hackers? Is it a technical issue? Is it intentional? What are they censoring? Why? Is there strategic deniability involved in what they're trying to do? <laughs> you know? Is there a cover on a cover on a cover? You know, that kind of thing. So, But what should happen is that it should just be able to make uh, the uh, video or the post and not have any problems, but that's not been the case at all. Um, anything critical there of the Georgian government for a little bit would be uh, would be problematic in uploading, even if it's a short video, but especially specifically on the topics of Leila Kartveli, the Patriarch, and the, uh, this uh, defense project, um, and their uh, defense-related project. Uh, I'll make that correction um, and that clarification, because down um, back in May, I've already talked about this story. I won't repeat it here again. Uh, at the moment, but 
Um, but it's very interesting how they, they are, um, you know, even on this last event, as I was on my way over in a taxi, Jeffrey Silverman calls. Ring. And I'm like, geez, I'm almost to the Rooms Hotel. And Jeffrey Silverman has been around this part of the world living here the 23 years in the former Soviet republics. He's um, Veterans Today magazine. The U.S. Embassy has discredited him basically uh, on their, on, from their point of view. Uh, he's talking a lot about the bioweapons, alleged bioweapons lab. Now, I have a close friend that's got a friend that's in, or a brother that's in the, over an arm of the Georgian Security Services here, or Secret Services. And uh, she explained to me that uh, what the situation with the bioweapons, the alleged bioweapons lab is, is very simple. That she claims it's Russian propaganda. It's, it's designed to be anti-American in its uh, intention. And uh, because Silverman, for a while, I think, couldn't even come back to the United States, uh, he called me and asked me to meet him I don't know, it was about a month or so ago and, and had me an article, and that also looked to be anti-Trump, anti-American propaganda. And I published it because I think that people should be able to think independently and on their own, but, uh, and to show what he gave me when I met him, which was in the worksheets he printed out before, before he called me and asked me to meet him. He was at the airport when I got here. He was in the bus. 20 minutes after I got on, he, he showed up. and So here I am, I'm headed over to the event, Rooms Hotel, a couple days ago, and here he's calling me, saying that, you know, you're, you're, you're wasting your time, blah, 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 you know. And will you meet me after? And because I'm in town, and but I'm going back out of town again, and do you want to meet? And I tried to call him after, but the phone was virtually scrambled. I'm not kidding. He was like, blah, blah, blah. And so I just, you know, wait till later, and then he's calling a couple times, and I'm way too busy with photos and edits and writing a couple little things about the event. So, um, my friend yesterday explained to me that uh, the, in the, as the Soviet Union broke up, of course there was a, a laboratory here in Tbilisi or the Tbilisi area that was, had very serious virus and bacterial, bacter, bacteriological uh, samples. And um, everything was in bad condition. Everybody knows this if they're uh, knowing anything about the situation here in that time. And so... She said, you know, we're, she said, we're very thankful that the United States of America came in and, and took uh, and helped the biological samples and viruses and bacteriologicals to be um, in, a, in a new laboratory, in a safe location, um, because without that, even, even back then, before America was ever here, uh, that it was understood that if there would be an earthquake, for example, that if some of these uh, samples were to uh, get released into the environment, that it could wipe out, you know, uh, it could kill everybody in the region, if not the entire world or whatever. I don't know about the entire world. But so that it was that the United States actually helped in securing and making safer against earthquakes and against security breaches or whatever um, these biological samples from what was a lab in the Soviet times. So that's how she explained it to me. And then she's saying that the reason that Silverman's been on uh, Russian national TV news, in fact, he sent me another link through uh, the professional network LinkedIn, uh, where he's over there on the Russian news uh, talking once again about the alleged bioweapons lab. So this is how my friend explained to me that this is just, uh, on his part, anti-American propaganda. It's designed to get the... Uh, Russians or others here that watch that stuff very angry at us, distrustful of us, things like that, when in reality the lab was here before the Americans ever ever helped with with uh, Georgians, and especially with helping them to get that to a safe and secure and much more professional new uh, vault, I think is the word she used, uh, or laboratory. So there's a couple of different ways that uh, one may look at that, but um, it's not really my topic. The reason I share it here is because that's what happened. I'm on the way to the conference. I get the phone call. What do you meet me after? Da, da, da. So um, there's a lot of that going on, you know, like influence uh, people that are associated with um, different interests that have tried to get my attention. And at the same time, we have the censorship issue. Is it Facebook? Was George right? Well, Facebook was saying it was George. You know, so somebody doesn't want me to give out certain information or 
talk on certain topics and for that to be seen and known. Another side actually seems to promote more openness or at least uh, appears to be promoting more openness, democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, uh, journalism, uh, film work, etc. So, um, but I noticed that, you know, there's always this, um, there's sometimes this word research being used and they, I wonder if it's an ex experiment in control, right, of what, what church, of what they're trying to do. Like, you know, because strategic communication uh, can also be about, you know, tests, trials, who we can trust, who we can't trust, how's the technology working, how's the psychology working, blah, 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 how's the you know, second tier communication working where the person is getting direct media influence, but the other person, the second tier, they don't watch TV, they don't listen to the news, they don't, and so how does that second, there's there's a lot to it. I've studied at least that much uh, at Central Missouri State University. I actually took some courses on communication. I'm not an expert, and I don't know everything there is to know, and back then you can be sure there was nothing like Facebook, and Internet was far from being developed at, to the level that it is now. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that for those that might have interest. Most of you won't have interest in that. Here's something for those that are interested in astrology. What I thought to do, but I don't know if it'll make a lot of sense because people will learn very quickly and see how I'm doing it, but I can take the same live stream. I can take the astrology program on the, let's say this is the laptop screen, for example, and I can, I can bring that in and I can take that cursor on a chart and with Magi Astrology chart in particular, and I can go through a predictive uh, astrology reading in less than, uh, you know, less than an hour for sure, generally speaking, but sometimes it can be as short as 15, maybe 30 minutes or something. It depends on, on how much information that I'm going to give. So I'm thinking about experimenting with that. It depends on how I can set that up. Like right now, the sun's coming down at a certain way. There's a certain light. Um, you know, I'm at a I'm at a park here, very nice, a um, lot of green here. Um, north of us, there's not always this much green. This is known as a very green city, and that's Tbilisi. So if you go to Kiev, if you go to Moscow, it's not it's not. Everyone in those places would tell me like, oh, Tbilisi is known as such a green city, you know, and um, more Mediterranean, more mild climate. Uh, it feels like spring here. There's certainly no snow or anything like that, unless you go up into the Caucasus Mountains. You know. So um, if, if the lighting is right uh, and if the setup is right, I can start to do that. You know, I, can, I can turn the screen and poof, there it is. There's the, um, so I might try that and see how that works. But I did have a chance to speak with um, Elizabeth Rood, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission, United States Embassy, currently at the moment charge day of affairs while they're waiting to um, determine or waiting on if maybe they've already determined. I don't have any information on this, uh, but I do know they're expecting the next U.S. ambassador to come here um, and to um, take um, the position that Ian Kelly was, was in. And I think, uh, as it's stated on their website news, that he's in, I assume he's in Chicago now. That's my assumption based on the website news of the U.S. Embassy. So it was nice to visit with her for a second and to see, uh, get a photo with her because she's actually uh, one of the opening stars of my Noble Partner 2017 documentary film. I had the privilege to be there, talk with our troops for a couple of hours. I sat with U.S. Uh, Army Europe media specialist. Uh, and they were in their full fatigues, um, camouflage. Um, and um, I, I, I appreciated her first 45 seconds because in the first 45 seconds of her speech out there in English, and she also did it in Georgian, which is incredible, and, and she mentioned that she had to learn the word interoperability in Georgian, and she repeated it in Georgian, and Tamar repeated it in Georgian, and I'm like, that's probably going to take me a few days to <laughs> To learn the, the Georgian uh, word for interoperability. It, it was, in my mind, I'm trying to, you know, like figure out how this is going to be spelled, right? So I could study this and get the phonetics down. I'm thinking, it, it, in my mind, it was something probably like, like a word like this in Georgian for interoperability. But she was telling me how she had to learn that word, and that was uh, 
quite a task. But she did an amazing job because she put into 45 seconds what I had wrote in a paragraph or two on the topic of the Georgian military's uh, contribution to um, as, as a largest non-NATO member, the largest contributor to the um, ISAF mission, but also oftentimes they're fighting side by side, shoulder to shoulder uh, with our troops, you know, with American troops, with U.S. military. And she put that down and got that down in 45 seconds. So I told her, I said, that's why I opened that last day, the closing event, August 12th, I believe, um, on the uh, live fire exercises. So it's, it's in English, 45 seconds, and then it's in Georgian. She does both. So that anybody watching that film over the years, far into the future, for whatever reasons, if it's in a class somewhere, if it's in military school somewhere, whether it's just for historical archives, uh, I think um, that's very brilliant on the part of Elizabeth Rood, the U.S. Embassy here, because that, that captures the essence, the very core uh, and very important contribution of Georgia's uh, military to uh, our forces and our, as our allies in our military and also to NATO as the largest non-NATO um, contributor per capita, for sure. So, also that's something that uh, when I visited Roy Blunt's office, Senator Roy Blunt's office in Columbia, Missouri, talked to Jordan. Jordan mentioned that within the first minute or two. So he was aware of it. He knew it without me having to even uh, speak that. So he was he was really on top of the situation because it was a last minute thing for me to visit his office. I had a death in the family, uh, unexpected naturally. So whew, I was off within. Uh, about a day or two of notice of that, I think it was pretty fast. I got a GoFundMe going, raised about $1,040 to help to contribute to the funeral costs um, because it was a sudden, unexpected death and the nature of the situation. And they wanted to give people the opportunity to contribute with that. Um, so, and then suddenly I'm back and uh, the funeral was set and I had finished all the help with the arrangements. So I called to Columbia and I said, can you guys uh, can you guys get me in for a visit because I've got about a, a, another I'm leaving on Monday and it was a, it was a Thursday they got me in the next day so that's how fast it was so when I walked in there it was pretty impressive that he he knew the key point right off the bat and um, so he wrote down um, my suggestions and paid very careful close attention to what I said and, and as I stated in opening this video first few minutes about half of what I said at least uh, was repeated on the House floor by U.S. Congressman Steve Russell. So but I do find it interesting though that like I said when I come back over here and his calls were the State Department and upon the President at the time I want to point that out. So, But when I come back over here just on January 2nd Silverman was literally happened to get on the bus within 20 minutes that I'd been on the bus. I tried to, I was going to get a taxi and they were going to charge me too much. I'm like, oh, screw it. I had already read on a trip report, trip advisor somewhere that there's a, there's a bus now that you can just easily take in here. And I know the area quite well. So I just offered the taxi guy my my offer and he didn't take it. So I have to forget it. I just went over to the bus and there, and there Silverman is. And he's telling me about uh, his concern for the use of biological weapons and things like that. And I think that might be one of his specialties. I know chemical, I think chemical weapons is. And so anyway, you can read about him on Veterans Today, but my, I gave the explanation of what my Georgian friend, who's very familiar with the situation on the, uh, with some inside context there. And uh, she claims that it's just um, anti-American propaganda for the Russians. So, and there, it's important to note that Silverman there's a, an, I don't know if he wrote the chapter or if the chapter's just about him, but it's for sure about him. But it's in the book on uh, Putin's Praetorians uh, on Amazon. Uh, so these are guys that write favorably of, of, of Putin uh, or maybe of Russia. So, but with that in mind, uh, she explained that to me, and that's how she explained it. So. That's the caveat, but I just, I just, it's, it's to me a, a bit, you know, strange. I'm going to the event, and he's perfect timing, just almost when I'm there. 
Well, let me explain this. I've, I've said this before. Here's how it can work over here, all right? There's an ISEC event. There's a girl that I've paid. She's a friend of ours, one of the girls that I've dated for years. She works at the high-level Department of Justice. Uh, she talked to me about marriage and stuff before. I've met her family and everything. Dated her for about three years. Um, she's got her master's in law, very intelligent, uh, young Georgian woman. And it's our mutual friend, and I've given her some money to do some interpreting, and it's at the parliament, uh, or the parliament uh, library. And after the event, I asked, I said, do you want to get something to eat? Because it, we're hungry, and Wendy's is right there. On the outside there is the, the, the deck, the patio. Everybody can see it's very public. It's right on the Roosevelt Valley. And we sit down to eat, and we've got our phones, or tablet in my case, mobile internet tablet and um, she gets a phone call and then up over here her boyfriend's saying bon appetit in my Facebook chat and I'm like wow you know like how does he know that that we're here you know like I'm just thinking like did she tell him because I didn't see her use her phone or, or SMS or whatever because it's very close to where we were at I made this film and she took a couple of photographs and she was interpreting and was paid to do it. So um, she said, listen, his father is with the police here. And they know everything, everywhere, any mo every moment where I'm at. And she goes, I can't go anywhere without them knowing exactly where I'm at and what I'm doing. And that's a, and she goes, I, so th that's how it works. That's, a, that's what we call a police state, friends. Not only do they know They'll let you know that they know. And they like to brag about it over here. That's a very, very different situation than in America, at least as far as I know. Now, maybe there's some people that are with family or friends in the, in the, in the police over there, and maybe they get a little different uh, insight or they, they got experience with that. I don't know. Now, see, the lights change, the sun, so I'm going to try to move a little bit. So, but that's what happened. I mean, it's like suddenly um, she's telling me this story because it's like it doesn't matter where I go, what I do. They know exactly where I'm at, and, and this is what they'd done when they had disappeared Eva. Eva was so shocked because we were at the House of Justice, and they denied the marriage license. She's a university student. And um, we went there to get married, and she was so frightened and afraid because her, her family's, one of her family members works in Parliament, and they bragged about it. They said, we knew your plan. We knew everything. Because, you know, they used to put in news here that, like, they'd find a bug, you know, surveillance, listening device, eavesdrop device, electronic surveillance uh, behind a, 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 a painting on the wall. Or they'd record someone sitting in a restaurant somewhere having a conversation. And they'd just publish it all over the goddamn television here. That's welcome to Georgia. That's some real Soviet shit right there. So, but they did that. You could be out some restaurant talking and then, and then suddenly that conversation is all over the TV and uh, or how about this when in Saakashvili's time they bullshitted for what was it 30 minutes or so they come on TV and said the Russians were attacking everybody was flipping the hell out everybody was in panic hey, it was just a hoax man hey, it was just testing things out that shit really happened so you know this is the kind of crazy uh, place that I'm in right now and that and those regards so it is that to say that uh, and they they i went to the police they confirmed yeah she's we called the monastery she's in the monastery well she was forced into or coerced into the goddamn monastery i know because i saw her face i saw how she was i saw how she reacted so they just kind of if they want to violate your human rights they want to violate american citizens human rights they want to violate uh the georgian citizens human rights it's no problem for them they will do that and they won't even think twice about it. But the thing that really is mind-blowing is they'll brag about it. Like, oh, my family, my uncle is in the government. Or in this case, it was their uh, cousin or something like that working in parliament. And that's just what they do. They'll just do that. That's it. They'll just... And we're giving these people, this country, there's three million Georgians here, we're giving them millions and millions and millions of dollars, defense, military support, and that's just how
how they do it. That's just what they'll do. I know, I've seen it. So, you know, I was asked to help with this uh, defense, American Georgian defense related project. And I could go, I could file with the Ombudsman. I could file in the House of Justice. I could file at the Public Defender's Office. It might be one and the same. The file there might go to there. I don't know. I could go to Belgium. I could make a big deal out of this if I wanted to. But and, and In fact, there's been other things that have happened that I could have made a big deal out of and that I could have pursued in the legal sense. But what I've done is to put what I've done above all of that including some real very provocation from our neighbor from the north. Because had I reacted in the wrong way, or had I detracted to those issues and those pursuits, then I wouldn't have been able to accomplish what I've been able to accomplish thus far. And especially with films that I have that will last and be around for forever. And that are very public. And films that I've created over the last four and a half years on that specific uh, topic or the, or the related directly to the American Georgian defense related project that I've helped with for four and a half years. Now it's important to remember that the government had repeatedly invited me here according to Leila Cardvelli and Katuna Polari uh, who is an uh, advocate for the Georgian Ministry of Defense. It's important to remember that the government came to me, I didn't go to them, and it's important to remember that they uh, uh, not only uh, took my advice on uh, a couple of points, but they actually implemented my advice. It's important to remember that. Now, I've stated that before, uh, and over the last several weeks, several times, so um, I didn't sit around and tell, you know, the U.S. Embassy uh, deputy chief mission, the DCM, I didn't tell her about all these things because it's a long story of what all I've done and, and uh, over these years here uh, in regards to, in positively speaking, to the project that I was asked to help with. So, but for friends that are watching now or later, I see Mike Vollmer, how are you doing? <laughs> um, that's, that's just a few little details with that and that's, you know, because I'm sure some people have asked close friends especially that know everything, they was like, why didn't you pursue this, this, or this? They could, well, if there's a higher objective, um, pursuing these other things may have detracted from success in these other areas. You know, like for example, one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to take all my films on NATO involvement or NATO sponsored events in Georgia. NATO involved or NATO sponsored events in Georgia. And I did that and it was quite a few. And I don't think anybody, unless they had a real brain, uh, are really paying attention. Both counts, right? A real brain and really paying attention. I don't think anybody else would realize that I could suddenly, in, in, in you know, less than an hour, come up with a playlist with with so many films on that topic that I've, as a documentary filmmaker and journalist, uh, compiled or published, created here. In so when I say I've created, I mean I've come as a videographer. I've come as a as a, a documentary filmmaker. I didn't plan the events or something like that. I didn't direct the events. I should clarify that. But so I doubt. So I one day come up with that playlist. I could come up with a couple more. I think it's seven minimum military bases that I've filmed on. I could come up with that playlist. I think there is. Um, I don't know if there's as many interviews that I've actually done or questions to forums, such as the Saravani event where I ask about Russian military or occupation forces uh, or the authorities there uh, forcing bribes on the citizens that were displaced, the internally displaced persons, the citizens that still have land or houses there at that time that they had to pay an exorbitant amount of bribe to get their documents, to get their houses, their lands back. So there's those questions, there's the NATO Security Conference questions, there's uh, a girl with nice legs and a short skirt and nice boots. Anyway, get a little distracted there. Oh, I'll uh, see if I can get her on that. Yeah, there you go, Balmer. What do you think? <laughs> uh, anyway, there's probably a, 
I didn't count every single one, but maybe there's like six or seven where I've actually done an interview, like with uh, Ucha, the general director of uh, Scientific Technical Center Delta, or maybe um, Jimmy Malloy, then building specialist with classic buildings in Columbia, small uh, Amish wood frame buildings. Excellent quality. So I have a, a walkthrough interview with him. That's an excellent film, in my opinion. It's pretty cool. And uh, I've also got uh, the Dr. Tamar interviews. Sharon Marr interview, the designer, a tailor, fashion designer, former model. And I've got um, data security conferences I mentioned. We've got the uh, questions that I ask at the Saravani event was U.S. Embassy sponsored with the U.S. Embassy uh, professional interpreter there and an NGO present, I think. Um, so hope for a better world or something like that. So there's at least, but there might be seven. I'd have to go back and count all of them that I've done. So, but I don't, I haven't put them into a playlist or one specific place yet. And then some of the other information that I talked about from the project as far as, you know, the acquisition uh, that Georgia got, the, the gift uh, that I requested from from our senators, uh, which uh, Roy Blunt is um, one of three U.S. senators on Defense Appropriations Committee. Nobody perfect or better in the entire United States, outside of two other men, to ask that question to, to make that request to. Um, although I did, to be non-political, and non-partisan. Uh, also write and visit with Senator McCaskill's office as well. So um, that's a pretty amazing thing for the teamwork that took place on October 2015 NATO Security Conference Black Sea topic because you got our American friends, American representatives. You've got Layla was there, so Georgian's also my friend, the Ar Armenian girl, but she's by Georgian raised all her life and mentalities. Pretty, pretty Georgian. But she's Armenian by blood. Then you got the actual Armenian uh, resident, but American citizen. He grew up, born, raised, educated in America. But he spends time now in Armenia. And he gives a 10 minute presentation during the conference that uh, he has a lot of faith and belief in this part of the world. And that's why he's passionate about security and uh, security and peace issues in this part of the world. So. Here you have the Azerbaijan uh, presenter. Um, I, I don't know if I can say his name right, Dr. Mikhailov, and personal advisor to the president of Azerbaijan. So I don't want to get into the politics and all this stuff like that, but for those that know, for those that are that are local, for those that understand the history and all that, that's pretty amazing <laughs> that you can pull that off. But we did. It's teamwork. It just happened to work really well and if everyone would work like that together here and put all this history and put all this uh, differences and stuff like that beside them of course I get pretty angry when I tell stories about how that you know I contacted a doctor uh, a day or so ago with a twenty thousand dollar potential profit to, and payment to her business right when you get an inquiry on this kind of package deal that, that I got an inquiry on it's just no response no response Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Belisi still no response we got twenty around twenty documentary films, three different fashion weeks, I email them, no response. I don't know what's going on with Tbilisi Fashion Week. I, I uh, applied to their sponsor targeted ad to me when I was yakking about the Mercedes-Benz uh, Fashion Week Tbilisi, no response. Then suddenly Facebook's ad target, I don't know if their artificial intelligence AI is working that or a logarithm of that kind or if it's somebody sitting over in California, they're, wherever their offices are at, maybe it's Singapore now, wherever the hell they're at, and they're like, oh, let's throw this over to Vanderpool and get him to not worry about that. Here, here's another fashion show, right? But there's <laughs> those guys write in their ad, because I apply to them too, and uh, as a journalist, as a photographer, as media, and uh, I, I go and uh, apply, and I'm waiting, and they said, well, we'll give an answer or a, or a denial, whatever, disappointment thing, regrets, whatever. We'll be on yesterday the fit or the day before yesterday the April 5th 
So they, they kindly and professionally, thank God, they gave an answer. It was the answer that there is no answer this week. <laughs> Maybe the answer will be, or the answer will be next week, something like that. So that's kind of funny, but that's how that worked out. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop with this and go to the cafe. Maybe I'll come back on. I don't know. It depends on how I feel. But I'm going to go get something to eat and get off using my data because I just used the data at the last event. It'll end up costing me uh, quite a bit for using this live stream video like this out here. So that's just a little bit of my thoughts on the project and the situation. I'll, I'll finish up by saying this too. One other reason that I've been pretty upset and uh, angry about uh, the situation here is because not only was there the violation of human rights on the marriage attempt here and the girl was basically coerced into the monastery, um, there was also the uh, fact that more recently, that that was some years ago, that was in 2015, December, but just in the last... Uh, I haven't heard from Layla Cardvelli since October. Not a word since October. I did get a letter from U.S. Senator Roy Blunt, February 1st, asking, that, or responding rather, that to the same letter that I talked about that I sent over on December 2017, where uh, I would I was suggesting about they they need to be given assistance with you know going for the increased pensions here and medical, having me adequate medical attention. And like I said, UNM come out with a brochure saying they'll do 400 uh, lari a month, 400 gel a month pension, and they'll go for a 2,000 gel or 2,000 lari a month uh, salary to the police. That's a hell of a deal if they'll actually do it, if they'll actually make it happen. Isn't that a beautiful background right there? That's, that's, that's what I mean. It's a very green city. It's a very beautiful area. It's up in the mountains. So anyway, um, no response from Layla. Layla got a copy of that letter. And she was with the U.S. Ambassador on the uh, March 1st, 2018 event where they talk about media pluralism and supporting media plurals, pluralism there. But I, I never heard anything from Layla. I didn't know anything about that event. So anyway, we had an issue in the beginning of the project where Layla was checking Katuna because she thought and was checking to see if she was giving her honest answers because maybe there was an answer given that I didn't give. So in other words, instead of a yes, it was no. Instead of a no, it was a yes. That kind of thing, which is what sent me originally to complain about them and to double check on the U.S. Embassy to my U.S. Senator's office. If you want to know the truth, that was one of the issues, which is how can these people not be so serious about their own defense-related project? Because if they're not going to be serious about it, I'm not going to. I'm not going to fool with it. And that's one of my first visits to Senator U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill's office, January 7th, I believe it was 2014. Also about the extreme concern I had over an inadequate civil defense here. And since that time, unfortunately, they had a deluge come, and they don't have any early warning systems that I know about. That sound off, you know, they they don't have any of those whistles. I don't think. If they do, I don't know about it. So uh, there was a deluge, an uh, avalanche or something in the mountains, and a big, uh, incredible flood that happened and wiped out maybe, I don't know, around 20 people or something. And the zoo animals were, a lot of them were, most of them were wiped out. And there was alligators in the streets or bears loose and lions and all kinds of, welcome to the jungle, baby. Right? This is, that really happened. It was tragic, but uh, anyway, um, That's one of the issues, yeah. They'd, they'd, they'd say, hey, um, maybe maybe I'd say, yeah, I'll come to Saravani. And then Layla's being told, uh, Michael said, no, he's not going to come to Saravani. <laughs> it's a good way to get, get uh, make it look like you're not going to attend, you know, you're not interested in all this and that. So anyway, I don't know what they're up to. I don't know who's surveilling, uh, who who's blocking I don't know what games people are trying to play, the tech companies, the governments, the secret services, the secret police, the CIA, the U.S. government, the military, the Russians, the Georgians, and Winnie the Pooh. I'm not sure who's doing what always, but I know somebody is uh, in between real technical errors and real, real mistakes and real misunderstandings. 
Maybe somebody's trying to do some sabotage somewhere in this deal about this project. I don't know. What do you think? I'm on my way to the event. Here's Silverman call it. Hey, you're wasting your time, you know, if you think that... Da, 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 da. Anyway, I'm not going to repeat his... his uh, our, our phone conversation, but... I, I uh, certainly have let the public know that that's how that went down. But I it was... Uh, pleasant event. The cakes were small. I will say that. The cakes after or during, actually, they were like smallest cakes I've ever seen. What's up? Somebody's got a limited budget on events. <laughs> Everything else was good. Everything else, the hachapuri was, no, we didn't have hachapuri. I'm joking about that. So anyway, I'm getting over to the cafe now. It's a beautiful park here, and um, that's some of that. But I, friends, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how you guys, some of you, are, maybe you're wealthy, maybe you're not. Maybe some of you are struggling with money. Please send me some. <laughs> I'm joking. But what I am saying, though, is, is imagine this. You've got a, a signed business agreement with someone, and suddenly after you've spent, you know, $350 travel in websites and PR, and you've spent uh, several days and actually working with that visit, film, uh, Facebook page, and so on, and then they just, that's it, just, that's it. They're done. There's no good reason other than it's on the issue of meeting, which a lot of other foreigners have issues with when they deal with uh, the people here that have, have little to no experience with foreigners. It's a huge issue. I know, I talked with the U.S. military, it's been here for two years. Two years. We're at the airport, and his word was it's brutal when it comes to agreeing on mutually agreed time and place, getting a commitment to meet, when to meet, and getting that other person to keep their agreed upon time to meet and I also know from a friend from New Zealand who spent a month here and another two months here he called it maddening it's not just me it's not me maddening is the word he used brutal is the word that the US military guy that's lived here for two years and he's got a Georgian girlfriend and we're talking about the airport his word he brought it up he brought it up I didn't bring it up he brought it up because he asked. He goes, "How's?" He goes, "What's it like? What do you think about being here for so long? What do you think?" He goes, "It's brutal, isn't it?" And then he started talking about how it was so difficult and uh, frustrating when you try to get somebody to meet, keep their commitment to meet, be on time, not change the time, things like that. And I've talked about what former U.S. Marine Officer Mike Martley said in terms of a training program when I met him at the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce. Western companies here that try to employ Georgians and they have to have special course of training to be able to even deal with schedule changes and time perception, time management in terms of Western orientation and working on a Western uh, corporate way with that or just in a way, just as a manager or just even as staff in a Western company in that sense. So anyway, it's not just me. I want to point that out. Somebody wrote me like, oh, you've got anger issues. I'll tell you what, you have somebody uh, just fuck off a $20,000 potential payment to their company or or what could be uh, your own fifteen thousand dollar deal right that's a lot of fucking money and you get fucked around on something like that I get uh, maybe some of you are cool about that hey, it's just fifteen thousand dollars no big deal right some of you be going through the roof you know it some of you be like oh hell no some of you be going off about that I know I know some of you watching I know Jessica would be going crazy about it. I know Michael would be going crazy about that. <laughs> I know my American friends are like, what? <laughs> $15,000 deal here, and you're not going to answer the phone? You're not going to return the email? What is it? Hey, I got a $20,000 client for you, man. $20,000 coming to your account. What do you think? You think, Whew. <laughs> Nah, they're just going to not respond. And the thing is, you know when you send the email, it's like Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Belize. When you contact three different people. It's like, hey, I do films. I've got people from Hollywood that liked my photo sets last time I was there on my journalist page. Natasha Blasick's one of them. She's been in several Hollywood films. She's attending Hollywood events all the time, every week. I know, she's on my Facebook, and she liked one of those photo sets from Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week, and they've had uh, Hollywood celebrities buy dresses that have been featured in the shows here. And that includes uh, Lady Gaga and uh, I think maybe Rihanna or there's another one. So they've been featured in the local press that the designers have been 
they've had to, and a lot of those people, uh, these Hollywood stars, I've got a couple of them on my friends list, and they're seeing these photo sets, and they're seeing the films. So it's mind blowing. And on Twitter, there was a, a New York photographer at the New York Mercedes Benz Fashion Week that gave a shout out and thanks to me on Twitter for the photos. So it's just mind blowing that when I contact these people, no response, no response. And you got the Minister of Defense at Katuna Polari and Leila Cardavelli on the project that say, hey, uh, we would like you to not only help us to popularize, because I'm reaching more than 121 countries. And Russia and China's analytics aren't even showing on YouTube analytics now. They used to. They don't show on there now. But there might have been 10,000 people just watching my film on the street I'm on right now. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, at least in about a year, year and a half. So it's reaching over 121 countries. I don't know any other Georgians that's doing that or Georgian media that's doing that. And this project has to do with international. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily about just Georgia at all, actually. It's more international. And at least from my understanding. So the idea of not even getting a response to me is just mind-blowing. And that's why I got pissed off and said, what is this Georgian Ministry of Defense here? It's a weak organization. If they can't even, and if it's the American side, if it's an American-owned company, a Georgian-owned franchise, just more of this, it's almost communism. It's to the point to where, you know, when you've got where you're asked to do these things, you do these things, and you're told that um, you should, you know, you should, you can help with this or whatever. Can you help us with this by the government? By the government, two. Go there's more than one. You got NATO is 28 nations, maybe 29 now, but I think at least 20, 29 nations. Well, the most powerful military alliances in history of the world. But you got the Georgia Ministry of Defense here. What are they doing? Are they just what do they what do they sit on a freaking desk over there and, and listen to uh, old music or something all day and drink tea? What are they doing? What do they do? What do they? What are they? Just what are they? Who are these guys? I can't even get an answer. Or do they just are they jokers? They comedians? These people? They just make up shit. They just say, "Hey, will you help us with this?" And then one day, like, "Yeah, you know, we're done. We're finished. We've changed our mind." <sighs> Leaf in the wind. Are they just powerless to? What are they just? They just. Are they too busy out on the, on the range or what are these? Who, what, what's the problem with these people? That's that's what I mean. And uh, because, it's it's. And, and I don't know what's up with the Belisi Fashion Week people because, you know, that's their business. But it's just funny because they're like, they answered at least, right? On Facebook, in public, my public page. They answered. Uh, well, there is no answer yet. There'll be next week. Oh, okay. It's a good thing we don't have a flight being planned out. And we're trying to, you know, everyone that has flown or is familiar with buying plane tickets because a day or two on plane tickets when you're trying to schedule things, can be about a five hundred to a thousand dollar difference where I fly. So, that's how some of your international guests or visitors can be treated here, and that's not that's not very wise um, for whoever's irresponsible behind that. That's not, and that's why I made the comment that with Belize Fashion Week, at least they're professional enough and kind enough to give an answer. Hey, it's Georgia. I'm so shocked. Somebody decided to be a professional and at least give an answer that there is no answer until next week. Anyway, it's a beautiful day here. I'll see if I get this little train in the background, this children's train there at the park. Reminds me a little bit of the one up at Borjomi. Actually, the one in Borjomi National Park. It's, uh, you can take a train from here very inexpensively. Uh, overnight even, I think. I'm not sure now, but or maybe it's a day trip too, but it's been a couple of years since I've been up there. But there's a little children's train like that with Kansas City on it. Kansas City. That's that's where I lived from age 13 until about 20 years of age. Kansas City, Missouri. There's a little train with KC on it. Anyway, um, for those that see me on Facebook, and sometimes I'm very angry about the situation over here. Uh, when I call and tell my family this stuff or friends, they're just... 
or like how some of these uh, girls that I've dated, how they how they've done, they just it's like who does this stuff, you know? But I understand there's a cultural difference and so on and so forth. But who does this? Some of these things. It's just like dealing with uh, some. There's some very good people here. I've had some friends for since 2010 that I'm still very close with here. But some of these people that I've dealt with here are like dealing with somebody from another planet, a whole other world altogether. And when it comes to money, see, they don't know it, they don't understand it, but they're still acting like fucking Soviets. They don't even know it. Nobody's telling them, hey man, you're, you're acting like a little Soviet over here. They don't get it. They think they're, um, uh, I don't know, pro-democracy or pro-free speech or pro-Western or whatever, but some of them are little Soviets and they never woke up to the fact. Nobody's told them. But anyway, I'm going to cut this short, go to the cafe. Maybe I'll come back on when I get data set up over there. Or uh, Wi-Fi, because I'm using data. So, hope you enjoy the video. It's a very nice park here. It's very nice, actually. I think uh, there's Dinamo. There's actually the map here. Right now I'm facing which would be uh, the TV tower, which is, and the entrance is behind me. So this is Dinamo Stadium. So it's right across from there. For those that, I'm in Saratelli, I think this is still Saratelli. For those that don't know, this is the map I was going to try to get. For those that are Georgian, you can see where I'm at. So it's a pretty nice park. Anyway, maybe I'll come back on a Wi-Fi here in about 15 minutes. We'll see. Maybe less.